Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with a Shaggy Life podcast and CurtisTucker.com blog. I appreciate you guys checking in. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to see if I can squeeze a podcast episode in every week. Um, things uh, are pretty busy, so I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. But anyway, I am going to squeeze an episode in this week. And this one comes from a blog post that I wrote uh, basically about four years ago, and I got a lot of good feedback uh, from last week's episode talking about my house uh, there on West Broadway in the 70s. And so this one is also 70s related. Um, I'm not going to be doing all 70s on this podcast, but since I already had this uh, blog post uh, typed up and had posted it, but I had never done a companion podcast with it. So uh, so that's why I am doing that this week. So if you guys are listening to this podcast on your favorite podcasting app, don't forget you can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker or search for Curtis Tucker on YouTube. And then you can see me waving at you like I am right now in my uh, cool 70s um, decord uh, podcasting studio here at Shaggy Duck Studios. And so watch the video. If you guys are watching the video and you want to listen to other episodes, like while you're driving or if you're out running or something, don't forget you can listen to those podcast episodes on your favorite podcasting apps. The website is at curtistucker.com. And what I'm trying to do is with every podcasting episode, I'm trying to have a companion blog post on the website. So you can go to the website and watch the video or listen to the podcast right there on the website as well. So like I said, this uh, post I had done in 2020, and it basically was my top 10 favorite movies from the 70s. And the top 10 list was from movies that I had gone to the movie theater to see. And I probably... Uh, talked about most of these. I think Todd and I probably, I know we've done an episode of our favorite movies in the 70s. Now, I don't know if um, if we limited the number on that on the 70s Buzz podcast, and I don't know if it's going to match exactly with my list here. I don't know if, if we did that episode before this list. But anyway, so this is going to be, uh, so again, this list was originally top 10, but what I did was since I'm going to do this companion uh, podcast episode, I have added another 10. So these are my top 20 uh, favorite movies from the 70s. And hopefully there's one or two in here that maybe you guys have not seen. Um, a lot of these are the most popular movies of the decade. So uh, most of you guys probably have already seen them. If you guys are younger and you're listening, uh, you might uh, want to... Uh, go and uh, find all 20 of these movies and watch them because they are all great movies. Uh, you guys can hit me up with your feedback and your ideas at, I've got um, Curtis at CurtisTucker.com or Shags at ShaggyDuck.com. Hit me up at either one of those emails and uh, I would love to hear your feedback and I would also love to hear what your favorite movie or top movies were in the 1970s. So are you guys ready here we go. So um, a little background. So going to the movies in the 70s, uh, you know, I, gradu I graduated in 1981. And so basically going to the movies in the 70s, um, you know, there weren't as many movies. And in Enid, Oklahoma, we didn't have like a big, in the 70s, we didn't have a mall with a big, you know, like multiple movie theaters. And, and growing up, Basically until, I don't know, maybe 77, 76, 77, we only had uh, some downtown theaters that were, you know, single theaters. And then eventually one of them became a twin theater. And then I think around 77, we had um, a video twin built. So there just, there wasn't a huge variety of movies, um, you know, to be seen uh, unless you want to drive to, you know, like Oklahoma City where they had, you know, a mall that had like eight screens and you could see a bunch of different movies. So um, and then watching movies like prior to like 1975, um, you know, basically we rode our bikes downtown during the day, like on a Saturday or in the summer. Um, just on a typical work, you know, um, weekday. And we would watch the movies uh, by ourselves 
Um, and I remember them being like 50 cents going down to the Esquire Theater, but um, we had to watch them during the day because we didn't have parents with us. So uh, it wasn't until like maybe 76 that we actually started going to the movies, the video, or 77, 76, 77, somewhere in there, we'd go out to the video twin, and we got to see movies at night on the weekend, and our parents would drop us off. We didn't have to ride our bikes out there, and uh, that's when we kind of started meeting up with the girls at the Pizza Inn and the arcade afterwards, which made uh, the movies a lot funner, and I think that's why some of these have stuck in my mind so much. But um, so the first movies that uh, we used to see were a lot of the Disney movies downtown. And some of my, some of my favorites were the um, Escape to Witch Mountain type movies uh, and the Apple Dumpling Gang and those stuff. Now, those did not make my top 20 list, but that's kind of where uh, I kind of remember going to the movie was um, riding my bike. And then I kind of remember my mom taking me to Love Story uh, downtown at um, the Esquire and some movies. Uh, James Bond, my mom took me to all the James Bond movies uh, in the 60s and 70s, and I kind of, kind of barely kind of remember those. Um, but again, once we got into junior high, uh, you know, it wasn't as cool to ride your bike and watch a movie during the day. So that's kind of when we uh, started going to the Video Twin and our parents would drop us off uh, until we got old enough to drive, and then we would just drive over there. And so, um, so the, the my list, the first ten movies on my list, I actually saw at a movie theater in the 1970s. The second ten, uh, there are a few of them that I did see at the theater, but a lot of those I either saw on video because in the 80s and 90s you know, watching movies on video was huge. And, and then some of them made their way to like HBO and, um, you know, the paid movie channels. And so, so the second half, the second 10, a lot of those I either saw like on HBO or, uh, probably rented the video. Now there are a few of them that I did see at the movie theater, but the top, my first top 10, um, I definitely saw at the movie theater. And I think that's why I remember them and they're in my top um, top 10. And these are uh, the top 10 and even the second 10 are in no particular order. This is just uh, how I wrote them down. And uh, before I get going, one caveat for you guys, you're going to notice, and I've mentioned this before on the 70s Buzz podcast, um, you are not going to see uh, two of the, two, what's considered probably the two greatest movies in the 70s uh, by list after list after list. They are not on my list and that would be The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two. And the reason they're not on my list is, number one, I never saw them in the 70s. I actually did not see them until I was uh, in my 50s. Like, just, I, I can't remember the exact year I finally sat down and watched them, but it was only, I don't know, three or four years ago, and it was because we were doing an episode uh, for the 70s Buzz podcast. So um, Godfather, Godfather Two. Uh, I, I liked them. They were good movies. I think I just waited too long to see them. And I don't know why I did not see them in the 70s, but for some reason I didn't. And um, so anyway, uh, they are not on my list. You guys are probably going to be wondering, why aren't those two on the list? Uh, that's kind of the reason why. So uh, here are, and I'll try to give you guys maybe a little bit of uh, reasoning or background on some of these movies. So first one on the list is Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I totally loved that movie. If you guys know me at all and you listen to the 70s Buzz podcast, um, you know I am a huge Richard Dreyfus fan. Uh, one of the reasons is because of this movie. And so this one came out in 1977. I do think in my mind that this was like the first movie that we went to in uh, at the Video Twin in junior high that our parents dropped us off. And I think this was the first one that we got to go to without parents at night and then go over to Pizza Inn and meet the girls and then go to the arcade, and we just hung out. And so not only was it a great movie, but I just remember it being a great time uh, when me and, uh, you know, I, th I think by that time uh, Todd was hanging out with us in Staten and uh, probably... Mike Stearman and, and who are, you know, just a bunch of other guys. Now this, by this time going to these movies, um, 
this was not the West Broadway group. Uh, the West Broadway group uh, was more, some of those guys were going downtown and seeing the Disney type movies when, uh, we, but we, I don't remember us five getting together and ever going to see a movie. So this is more the junior high um, gangs, but, uh, but love close encounters of the third kind. Um, one of those alien movies that actually seemed kind of believable. I mean, it wasn't so far fetched that you didn't believe it. Love the way they did the movie, watching the movie today, uh, the, the special effects, the acting, everything to me still holds up. Um, I do have the close encounters of the third kind, um, movie, soundtrack or score on vinyl. I listen to that every now and then. And so uh, I think that is one of the uh, one of the great movies. And another one is Jaws. Uh, came out in 1975. Now I think Jaws, I might have seen downtown at one of the downtown movie theaters. And it might have been one of those where um, we rode our bikes and watched it during the day. Because I don't really remember... Uh, going at night um, and watching Jaws, but, uh, you know, a great thriller suspense movie. Some people uh, put it in the horror. I do not put it in the horror uh, category. Uh, it's never on one of my horror lists, but it is a super thriller. Um, again, another one of those type of movies that has you on the edge of your seat, but it's very believable. I mean, everything in Jaws, you know, probably could have happened. Um, so uh, love seeing that. Um, great movie score on this movie as well. And if you're going to, if you, you may notice that um, uh, I think it's because a lot of these seventies movies that I love movie scores. And so any chance that I can um, snag, especially a movie score on vinyl, I will do that. I do not have Jaws on vinyl. Uh, next movie is Star Wars. The uh, first Star Wars movie came out in 1977. I remember going to the Video Twin and seeing that. Um, my uncle told me I had to go see it. He was, I think, he went and see it, saw it. Multi he was one of those guys that would go see uh, a good movie multiple, multiple times, and so he uh, talked me into it. I don't know that I was super excited. Um, at first to go see it, I wasn't a huge sci-fi fan. I was a monster fan, um, but not not so much sci-fi. Um, but I went and saw it, and I thought it was great. The special effects were awesome. Uh, I have great memories of seeing the movie. Uh, but, you know, one of the things is, I, even though I think I've seen all of the main Star Wars movies since that one, but uh, just never became a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, I don't watch the new series that are uh, on the streaming uh, channels and stuff like that. And then I just never was like a Star Wars uh, collector of anything Star Wars. The toys, I don't know that I have kind of looking around my studio here. I've got a lot of 70s memorabilia, and I don't think I have anything uh, Star Wars. I guess I ought to get at least one thing Star Wars. But yeah, just was not a huge uh, collector of the Star Wars stuff, So, but I did like the movie. Uh, next one is Animal House. I remember uh, seeing Animal House in 1978 at the Video Twin. I think I uh, might have gone to see it with Mark Mankin and Todd um, and Staten. Uh possibly that group of guys, but um, I'm going to have to say it was uh, at that age and that time, it was one of the best boob movies for a, a young boy to see. Uh, and one of the funniest, I I think, I, I don't remember ever laughing as much during a movie as I remember laughing at Animal House. Um, you know, just... Uh, John Belushi being from Saturday Night Live. It was just a great, a huge Saturday Night Live fan in the 70s. And so seeing him on the big screen was just really cool. And then it being a fraternity flick, uh, it was just a, a good time, a great movie. And so that is in my top 10. Saturday Night Fever. How could you not love Saturday Night Fever in the 70s? It started the whole disco craze. 
1977. Um, yeah, we did. We did have one disco in Enid that we went to a couple of times. I wasn't a huge disco dancer, but um, I did try a little bit here and there. But that movie was just so full of songs, and every time I hear those songs, even today, it throws me right back to 1977, like instantly. And uh, just great songs. I wasn't a huge fan of the acting in uh, Saturday Night Fever, but definitely the dancing was great. Uh, the music was great. The storyline, you know, so-so. But, uh, you know, when you're talking pop culture and 70s pop culture, uh, Saturday Night Fever is at the very, very top. Um, you know, thinking about it, I do not have uh, the Saturday Night Fever album on vinyl. So that may be um, one of them I have to get. Oh, I didn't write down the year of the next one. Um, Poseidon Adventure. I think Poseidon Adventure was probably 70, I'm going to guess and say 74. Um, Poseidon Adventure. Let me see real quick. I'll look that up. Uh, yeah, boy, it was 72. You know, the thing about Poseidon Adventure is I, I remember seeing it at the movie theater. So my mom, either, it must have been one of those that either my mom took me to or um, we got to go on our own, but during the day. I have a feeling my mom probably took me to that one, but I just remember it being a great adventure movie. And then uh, when it came on video and, and the... Uh, I don't know if it was ever on HBO, but when it made it to TV, um, even today when it comes on, I still watch it because it's just it's it's one of those '70s movies that has held up great uh, over all of these years. So if you have not, if you're younger and you have not seen, now this is the original uh, Poseidon Adventure, and uh, it stars Gene Hackman. And then there's been a newer Poseidon Adventure with Kurt Russell, but I would highly recommend you see the original one. And um, if you really like it, then go ahead and see the newer one. But see the original one first. And uh, just a very unique story. Uh, again, one of those stories that, uh, you know, is very believable. But uh, a great survival-type movie. Uh, 1976, Rocky. I kind of remember seeing Rocky downtown at one of the downtown theaters. Um, a great underdog story. You know, not a lot of uh, no special effects, not a lot of well-known actors. It was just one of those uh, underdog movies that everybody really got into. I remember um, some kids would go see it multiple uh, times. And I think it was a, one of those that we probably went and saw during the daytime uh, downtown. But uh, a lot of great music, Going to Fly Now. I uh, liked the song so much. I bought the 45, used to play that a lot. Um, and so just a great, great movie, um, for back in the seventies. Another one of my favorite, The Goodbye Girl, 1977. And again, that's starring Richard Dreyfuss. So of course I liked it. Uh, I think it was probably my first, uh, chick flick. And then it was one of those that we saw out at the video twin, uh, and then probably met up with the girls afterwards. Uh, the song, uh, Goodbye Girl, um, Great song. Still uh, play it today, I'm trying to think. Uh, and I always I, um, could have told you any other day who sang that and uh, just uh, dropped out of my mind. Um, I know you guys remember, and uh, you're shouting it at me, but I don't off the top of my head. Maybe I'll remember here in a few minutes. So goodbye, girl. If you haven't heard that song, uh, check it out. Why do I want to keep wanting to say gate, gates, gate, gate, something like that? Um I could look it up, but I'm going to pass on that, and hopefully it'll come to me here in a few minutes. So Goodbye Girl, a great 70s movie. Uh, and then this one, uh, kind of a cult classic, I guess. One of our favorites. I say ours because uh, all of uh, all the guys that hung out, we went and saw it together in 1979, and that would be The Warriors, um, a great gang movie. Uh, one of those movies that actually caused a lot of fights, all over the country, and it was banned in a lot of movie theaters, and that's probably why it's kind of a cult underground classic. Um, now, we weren't big fighters and didn't go out and didn't have fights, but it did make us feel like, yeah, wow, we ought to, 
it'd be fun to go out and fight some of these uh, gangs that they had. But just a great, uh, a great movie. It's uh, one of the best soundtracks. I do have um, the Warriors on vinyl. The soundtrack um, in the city from the Eagles is on there, and uh, just some other great, um, great songs. And then just the the different gangs throughout the movie, the baseball furies and. Uh, the different ones, the way they dressed up or the things that they did. Uh, just a great, if you have not seen The Warriors, I highly, highly recommend seeing The Warriors. Another movie I watch every time it comes on and I'm around. And then uh, this is kind of like goes hand in hand. Uh, f- for me, The Warriors goes hand in hand with Phantasm. And Phantasm is even a more underground cult type film but both of these were at the video twin and so again this was 1979 um it wasn't a hugely advertised uh, movie it was a horror flick low budget horror flick but uh, a great movie um uh had a the scary guy in it was called the tall man and it was about this kid whose parents and had passed away and he was living with his brother and this tall man is uh, doing things at this funeral home. And just uh, if you have not seen Phantasm, I highly, highly recommend you see Phantasm. Um, you know, it wasn't one of the, it's, it's, it's got a little gore in it, but not, it's not considered like a slasher horror movie. It's just more of a um, creepy, it's a, it's a really cool, creepy movie, but then it's also got some really cool, you know, action scenes and characters and stuff in it. So uh, check it out. I remember when we left the um, theater and had to stop to go to the restroom, I remember going to the restroom, looking behind me, just making sure nobody was uh, sneaking up behind me. It kind of creeped. It it wasn't like it scared us, but it creeped us out. It was just one of those cool, creepy movies. And then they have come out with just a ton of Phantasm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, I would say stick with 1 and maybe I think 3 was um, also kind of connected to 1. Skip 2, but uh, anyway, definitely stick with number 1. And so that was uh, that's my top 10. Those are my top 10 uh, movies that I enjoyed from the 1970s. Not the they're not I don't consider them like the best acted movies. They just happened at a really good time in my life, which I have got really good memories of them, uh, being with my friends and and stuff like that. So check out all of that top 10 list. And now um, this is the uh, next 10, which makes top 20. And these I just recently added. So if you had read the blog post um, a while back, go ahead and reread it because I've added some extra stuff to the blog post. And then I've also added these extra 10 movies. And so uh, the first one, uh, which would be basically number 11, is Halloween. And uh, I mean, Halloween really should probably be in the top 10 uh, or number 11. But 1978, uh, I don't know why I did not see Halloween at the movie theater, but for some reason I did not. Uh, so I went off to college at uh, Northern Oklahoma College, a junior college, and I roomed with Kyle, who was in our band. And I think um, he had a girlfriend, and he I think he was working at a job. And so I was trying to, and it was, I think it was at the beginning of the, of the school year. And I was trying to do things to meet more people, to meet people that I didn't know. I mean, that was kind of the reason to go off to college at NOC was to meet people that I hadn't known. So, um, I took it upon myself to go to the, so the light, they announced that they were going to be showing movies at the library. And so they said that that night's movie was, um, Halloween. So I went to the NOC library by myself to watch Halloween and it was really pretty cool. Uh, I don't remember if I met anybody, but there was several, you know, there was a lot of people there and they must've had kind of like a big screen set up and they showed the movie there, but had the, I think they had the lights either off or down. I think they had them off actually. Um, and so it was kind of cool being at junior college in the library watching Halloween. Um, really cool, really fun. So I, I distinctly remember seeing Halloween there 
on the NOC campus. Uh, I, I think probably the number one horror movie for me, um, and I watch it, I try to watch it every year uh, at Halloween. Uh, brings back a lot of great memories. Jamie Lee Curtis, if you have not seen it, and, and uh, you are not a horror uh, flick person, this, is, this would be the one to see because it's not that bloody. Uh, it will keep you on the edge of your seat, though, but highly recommend it. Uh, 1977, how about Smokey and the Bandit? Now, this movie was just downright fun. Uh, Trans Am uh, speeding all over the country, uh, hauling beer in a big truck, CB radios, lots of songs. Um, Sally Fields, uh, she was a cutie. Uh, Burt Reynolds, you couldn't ask for a whole lot more in a movie for a teenager than a combination of all that. Uh, I did now. This was one of them on my second list that I did see in the movie theater, but um, have also watched it several times on TV, on the movie channels. Probably have also rented the video. Um, one thing about this movie, uh, kind of surprising, is I did have some friends that had that exact Trans Am, um, but I never really had the urge to go out and buy a Trans Am after uh, smoking the Bandit. But uh, that was one of the big parts. And, and CB radios, so uh, really great flick. Uh, next one on my list would be number 13 is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest from 1975. Now, I remember hearing about this movie and I think seeing the video, and for some reason, I just never would watch it. I think it was it's over two hours long, I think. Um, and I just, in my mind, I think for some reason, I just didn't think I would be interested in it. And I didn't think I would like it. And then I don't remember exactly when or how, but somehow I ended up sitting down and watching it and uh, just love Jack Nicholson's character and all of the other actors that were in the movie had not realized, you know, like Danny DeVito and some of those other guys um, hadn't realized that they were in it. So sat down and watched it and man, fell in love with the movie. So I love uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, just a great story. If you have not seen it, uh, won some Academy Awards, uh, you need to check it out. It is uh, one of Jack Nicholson's best movies. It was him in his prime, so check it out. Next one on the list, number 14, uh, another one from 1979, is Alien. Uh, talk about a crazy, creepy, another creepy movie. Um, it you know kind of freaked us out a little bit. It was basically Jaws in outer space had that uh, alien uh, hunting everybody down on the spaceship. Uh, you know, the special effects were great. The monster was great. It's another one of those 70s movies that holds up really well. Acting was well um, and everything in it. So uh, highly recommend it. Uh, number 15 is MASH from 1970. Of course, I was too young to probably go uh, to the movies, of course, you know, other than the ones my mom was taking me to. For some reason, um, I don't know that she knew she was going to fall in love with MASH, and I fell in love with MASH because of my mom, but we fell in love with the TV show and not so much the movie. So I don't know uh, if my mom had gone to the movie theater to see MASH back in the day, but um, became I became a huge fan of the of this TV series. And so I think I rented and went back and watched the movie. I love the movie, but I, I think I was already so invested in the TV characters and the TV actors that I couldn't get past that. So even though I liked the movie, I just did not like the, the actors playing the characters uh, as much as I like the actors from the TV series, and that's just because um, that's what I had seen first, and that's what I was used to. So, uh, 1970 MASH. Number 16, uh, another Richard Dreyfuss movie. How about American Graffiti uh, from 1973? Uh, this movie, I believe, uh, well, I know, is the reason I uh, fell in love with Happy Days, and so growing up in the 70s, I kind of had a fascination fascination with the 50s. I uh, would listen to a lot of my mom's 50s albums and watch old 50s shows. And so I kind of had this love of the 50s. And so American Graffiti came out and uh, it was like, oh, wow. You know, it was a great movie. Dragging the Strip, all the cars, the music, um, just a great uh, 50s um uh, movie. And then, of course, a lot of the characters 
um, I guess not a lot of them, but some of the characters from there um, went on to be in Happy Days. And so Happy Days, probably my all-time favorite uh, 70s sitcom. Number 17, Dog Day Afternoon. This might be one of those that maybe you have not seen. Um, I did not see this. It came out in 1975. I did not see this in the theater. And I think I caught it like on a, on TV at, w- at one time. Or I might have rented the video. I can't really remember. But I just remember uh, Al Pacino just sucked me into the movie. And at the end of the movie, I was I was just thinking to myself, why hadn't I heard about this movie? Why didn't somebody tell me I needed to see this movie? It's just, it's one of those movies that just, it's really great. Um, you know, it just, uh, you know, not a lot of effects and uh, not a huge amount of different actors. It's just uh, Al Pacino and, and the, his, the guy helping him rob, um, uh, I think it's, they trying to rob a bank. Uh, it's been a while. Now this one, it's been a while since I've seen, it. I probably need to re- see it again. I think I've seen it a couple times, but, um, it's been a while. So, uh, definitely a great movie. If you guys have not seen dog day afternoon, uh, one of Al Pacino's best, you guys check it out. Number 18, young Frankenstein. Uh, one of the funniest movies from the seventies from 1974, uh, black and white movie, uh, Gene Wilder, a ton of other characters in it. Uh, it's one of those movies that you come away with, uh, I mean, uh, sayings, uh, lines from the movie that you can say over and over and over again. Uh, funny, funny movie. I don't know that I thought it was as funny as Animal House, but definitely one of the top um, funny movies. And still today, knowing what's about to happen, I still laugh uh, when I watch it. So uh, check out Young Frankenstein. You kind of have to be in a mood to watch Young Frankenstein. So if you're in a mood to see a funny movie, that would be the one you'd want to see. Uh, The next one on the list is number 19. And so growing up, I was a huge fan of the old monsters from, uh, and you know, that may be one reason I liked Young Frankenstein, but uh, I think my uncle had kind of gotten me into uh, monsters with his monster models that he used to build. And then on Saturdays, I used to love to watch the old uh, monster movies on uh, the Saturday matinees. And one of those was King Kong. Um, used to love the old King Kong movies, black and whites. And then there'd be the King Kong versus Godzilla. And, you know, there was Wolfman and Dracula, but always, uh, just really enjoyed King Kong. And then in 1976, when they did the remake, um, I remember thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to go see this movie and it's going to be one of the best movies I've ever seen. Uh, now I wouldn't put it, you know, as in the, in my top 10, but I, I do remember thinking I want, I, I think I thought to myself, I want this to be um, you know, the best movie that I've seen. I did uh, enjoy it, uh, really liked it, great effects. Um, Jeff Bridges, a, a great cast, uh, loved the movie. And um, and then even today, uh, I think Kong, they've got like new versions, Kong came out. So any, any King Kong movie that comes out, I watch, and I, I have really enjoyed all of those, but um, really did enjoy... Um, King Kong in 76. And then I think they did another King Kong remake with uh, Jack Black, which I liked. But um, if you have not seen the 76 version, I would say go back and watch it. And then the last movie on my list, uh, some of you might not have seen. uh, It's called Breaking Away from 1979. It's about uh, some friends and a couple of them ride bikes, um, you know, that the type of bikes where you do the long distance racing. And I think I liked it because it was just a, it was kind of one of those uh, feel good movies and kind of reminded me of me and my buddies kind of hanging out, riding bikes and um, just kind of acting goofy, but a really good movie. Um, Can't think of the guy, uh, the guy's names um, in the actors in it, but uh, a great cast. So you guys check that out. Breaking Away, 1979. And that is my list of uh, my top 20 uh, movies from the 70s. Again, um, 
a lot of these I saw here in Enid and uh, just uh, special right there around 19, uh, basically 77 through, I think most of these are from 76 through 79. Uh, and that's funny. I don't see a lot of 78 or yeah, I guess animal house was 78. So, but yeah, it was just kind of that 77, 78, 79, uh, was just a great time in my life. And I think that's why these movies hold a special place, uh, in my heart, uh, because, uh, we were just, uh, you know, no worries in life. We were meeting girls, we were, uh, hanging out and uh, just had, didn't have a whole lot of worries, didn't have jobs. Uh, you know, it was just a cool, a cool time. So really enjoyed those movies. I hope you guys enjoyed the top 20. And uh, again, uh, email me, go ahead and email um, Curtis at CurtisTucker.com. Let me know what you guys, uh, your favorite movies of the 70s. And the cool thing about this podcast and CurtisTucker.com is I, uh, you know, I'm not just sticking to the 70s. So uh, here in a, in a while, I'll probably come out with my list of uh, favorite uh, movies from the 80s because, uh, man, I really loved some of the movies from the 80s, especially the uh, John Hughes movies. So um, that may be one of my upcoming episodes, probably not long away. Uh, don't forget, um, I we are just a few days away from the eclipse, and so I'm planning on doing an episode on this podcast next week all about how the eclipse turned out. Problem is, the weather is uh, is not cooperating. And so the plan to go down to uh, Grapevine may may not happen because it may be too cloudy down there. So we may end up heading over to Arkansas somewhere, but then also we're hearing that it might be cloudy over there as well. So um, it should be interesting to see how and how it turns out uh, the uh, the 2024 total eclipse of the sun. And so that, and basically, I think if I stayed in Enid, I think it's supposed to be sunny and we would get probably about an 85% coverage. But um, if you've ever seen a partial eclipse versus a total eclipse, it's the, the atmosphere and everything surrounding, surrounding it is, is completely different. And so um, don't feel like if you've seen an 80% eclipse that you've really seen an eclipse because you haven't until you are in the path of totality. So that's the problem that we're having is trying to find a, an area in the path of totality that's close enough that we can drive to um, that's not going to be covered in clouds. So uh, stay tuned. should be exciting to see how it happened. Uh, I will talk all about that um, next week's episodes. You guys have a great week, great weekend.